Now that we've covered some of the conceptual stuff with Newton's laws, we're going to move into some actual problems here. Um, so the main type of problem we're going to be doing here are what we call f equals ma problems, right? Uh, where we're really applying Newton's second law. That's going to be a huge equation that we're going to be using time and time again. So a few tips for solving these problems. Uh, we're going to start off with some basic ones. They will become more complicated, so some of these tips might not be relevant yet, but they will be. First and foremost, draw a picture. Draw that free body diagram. There's a reason why that was the very first thing we did when we started doing these problems. Second, we're going to find components for any forces at angles. We're going to use what we were doing with vector addition within the context of these problems. All right, there was a reason why we did that when we did it. Uh, we're going to write out our F equals MA equation using letters, um, not numbers if we can, if we know the, the symbol for the forces rather than writing out the actual value for the force. That's going to kind of be our goal. If it's a two-dimensional problem, which we're not going to have at first, but we will eventually, um, we're going to have separate equations, and we'll talk about that when we get to that. And of course, as always, be careful with your negative signs. All right? They will mess you up for sure if you're not conscious with them. So our first problem here, a car with a mass of 1,500 kilograms is accelerating at 1.1 meters per second squared up because a crane is pulling it upwards. The force of Earth on the car is 15,000 newtons down. What is the force of the crane? Assume no other forces. So I'm going to start out here drawing my free body diagram. So we have the force of the crane, which I'm going to call FC, pulling up on this object, and the force of the Earth, which I'm just going to call FE, pulling down. So that's our first step there, is identifying that picture. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and write our F equals MA. So sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Using this equation is huge, but this can be a little bit tricky, and here's why. F equals MA is a generic equation. It's true in any situation. The net force or the sum of the forces, that left side of the equation, will always be equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration. The key is to rewrite that left side, to rewrite it with the specific forces acting on our object, and take this general equation and make it an equation that's specific to our um, actual object. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to say that Fc plus the force of Earth, but I'm going to make it negative because it's going down, is equal to the mass of this object times its acceleration. That's the key step. That's always going to be the key step in these problems, is replacing that left side of the equation with the specific forces. Okay. One thing I should have added here is that my acceleration is going up at 1.1 meters per second squared. That obviously is not a force, but that is going to play an important role in knowing both the value of it and uh, the direction is going to matter. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in the things I know here. I don't know FC. I do know the force of the Earth there is at 15,000. And that's going to be equal to the mass of this object, which is 1,500, times the acceleration, which is a positive 1.1 because it's going up. So I can say that FC minus 15,000 equals 1,650. And when I go ahead and solve for FC, I'm going to find that FC is equal to 16,650 newtons. So there you have your first F equals MA problem, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to the next one, uh, we now have a 5 kilogram box that's being accelerated uh, horizontally across a floor to the right. Um, so we have a bunch of different forces acting on this box. And so the first question is, what is the acceleration of the box? Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to set up our F equals MA equation. All right, there is one little trick here, though, because as you notice, we have both vertical forces and horizontal forces. Um, but we're going to set that up. We already have our diagram drawn, so we don't have to worry about drawing our diagram in this case. So here's what we're going to do. Um, since we do have forces in two dimensions, we're actually going to set up two equations. So we're going to do an F equals MA, but... As we learned with vectors, x and y are independent of each other. x and y are orthogonal, and we're many times going to split them up. What's happening with our x forces has nothing to do with our y and vice versa. So I'm going to say the sum of the forces in the x equals m times ax. 
and I'm also going to set up another equation, the sum of the forces in the y direction, is equal to m times a y. You will hear me refer to these as max and may. Max and may are your new best friends. You're going to be using them a lot. Okay, we're going to, whenever we have forces in two dimensions, we're going to separate them out into x forces and y forces. So now I'm going to go ahead and write those f equals ma equations, replacing that sum of the forces piece, all right, in each case. So on the x side, the forces I have, simply going to be 29 plus negative 11, just adding up my forces, and of course, accounting for any forces that are going to the left or down and making them negative. So that's going to be equal to the mass of the object times my x acceleration. I'm going to go ahead and solve for it. We are looking for the acceleration, which we're told is a horizontal acceleration. So that's ax. So I can go ahead and solve this. I have 18 equals 5ax. So that means that my x acceleration here is going to be 3.6 meters per second squared. So that actually ends up being the answer there to question A. So we have that taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and set up my y forces as well, um, even though uh, it's not going to necessarily answer that second question. So looking at my y forces, the y forces I have, I have F, I have 16, okay, both going up. So they're both positive uh, in this vertical forces uh, equation. And then I have this 49 going down, so plus negative 49. Obviously, you could just subtract 49 as well. And that's going to be equal to 5 times a y. Now, I am going to make a little assumption here. The fact that it's accelerating horizontally means it's not accelerating vertically. So my y acceleration here is going to be 0. And I probably should have been a little bit more explicit about that in the problem. But my y acceleration is going to be 0, which means this entire left side of the equation is all zero. And so what I'm left with is F plus 16 minus 49 really gives me minus 33 equals zero. So that unknown force there is 33 newtons. And there's my answer to part C. Right? I just now need to get my answer to part B. How fast will the object be traveling after being pulled uh, a distance of 8 meters? Folks, in order to do this one, we are back to good old kinematics. So I'm going to think about the things that I know, okay, and go from there. So I know my displacement is 8 meters. I know we're starting from rest, so my initial velocity is 0. And my acceleration I just found in the x direction to be 3.6 meters per second squared. So I can use my VF equation to solve for the final velocity. So what I end up getting is VF squared is going to be equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 3.6 times 8. So I find that Vf squared is simply 57.6. And so my final velocity here is 7.6 meters per second. And there we have my answer to part B. That last uh, problem brought up an important point, and that is the link between... Um, what we were studying with kinematics and our new stuff. And as you can see, there's one variable and one variable only that kind of goes between both sides, and that is acceleration. Acceleration, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the key link between forces, um, which is the new topic we're doing, and our old stuff, which was kinematics. Okay, so when in doubt, a lot of times you want to find the acceleration, whether it's using our F equals MA, and our forces to find the acceleration and then doing something with it within kinematics, or vice versa. Maybe we're using kinematics to get our acceleration first and then using that within our F equals MA. Either way, finding acceleration is going to be an important thing moving forward.